Yeah, we got a we got a fucking YouTube channel, bud. You have to hit like and subscribe. Smash that bell. <laughs> <sighs> so do you ever um, do you ever get embarrassed when you say you're doing a podcast? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Not really. Because, like, like, we know, we are fully aware that we're doing a podcast. And everyone and their fucking mother has a podcast these days. Yeah, I think we we addressed that in, in the name. Yeah. It's true. So, like, here you go. If you want it, have a listen. Not fuck off. Give us money. Smash that bell. Please like us. Welcome to episode three of It's Another Podcast, though. I'm Zazu. I'm Joe. And well, here we go. But first, it's It's the news. news. Fortnite uses Apple's own 1984 ad against it in dispute over payments. Apple pulled the popular shooting game from its app store. After its developer tried to get around the fee Apple requires from in-app purchases. Teeth the size of bananas. New study paints picture of terror crocodiles. A new study reveals that there were multiple species of Dinosuchus, the giant crocodilians that lived 75 million years ago. They were among the largest predators in the ecosystem and ate dinosaurs. Don't sweat. Pants. It. The house dress is here to rescue 2020. Can a simple dress become a coping mechanism for the pandemic age? Billowing linen, cozy cotton, flowing silk. The house dress is a perfect fit for this moment. And finally, Brad Pitt. Jennifer Aniston team up for a live table read of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Pitt and Aniston, who reunited earlier this year at the 2020 SAG Awards and are both nominated at the 2020 Emmys, have joined the one night only virtual live table read of the 1982 rom com Fast Times at Ridgemont High, according to a press release. And that's the news. And here's episode three. All right, we're rolling. You wanna you wanna kick this off? Yeah. How do you wanna kick this off? Um, have you ever heard the quote? There's a sucker born every minute. Yeah, that was um, Henry Ford, right? P. T. Barnum. Oh. The circus dude. I don't know when he said it. Long time ago. I'm guessing. America has a great fondness for con men. Uh, Back from Joseph Smith all the way up to this minute right now, the current office of the presidency of the United States. At the heart... (laughs) of con men, I should say the business of con men has evolved into multi-level marketing. Multi-level. MLMs. Multi-level marketing. Um, Yeah, that's where uh, the food court is on the bottom floor and then the uh, Orange Julius and the Pretzel King are over by the movie theater on the top floor of the mall, right? 
That is correct. That, that was no. my that was my <laughs> joke. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh at my joke, Joe. Sorry, that's not how my humor works. <laughs> or is this going to be a serious one? No, no, let's yeah. let's uh, make all sorts of fun of it. So, yeah, MLMs. There's uh, the big ones. You got Amway, Herbalife, Primerica, Avon, Arbon International, Maluka, ACN, Maluka, WFG, Cutco. Did you say Maluka? Melaleuca. Oh. Yep. Uh, Isogenics. I could go on for a while. We could just have 45 minutes of me naming off multi-level marketing companies. There's a bunch on Facebook. Tupperware. It's really Tupperware. Yeah, that's one. Um, It works. There's clothing MLMs. There's health MLMs. There's utility MLMs, product MLMs. Are there MLMs for MLMs? There probably is now. (laughs) And we're going to corner that market. Uh, Yeah, there's a ton of them. You could be the CEO of your own pyramid scheme. (laughs) Just recruit five friends to start their own pyramid schemes everyone's a ceo so what i I wanted to talk about i guess the the similarities that they all share please do Uh, there's a really good book called merchants of deception by eric scheibler um that i read after some family members got into uh Amway and I really got to take like a a good look at the inner workings because I got uh, pulled along to a couple meetings not to join it just because I was on a road trip my brother and we had to stop and see a family member in Anaheim during one of their conventions and um, it was really weird I'm sure A lot like your Cutco experience. How did you know I worked for Cutco? You son of a bitch. Clever editing. We already (laughs) talked about that. (laughs) Also, if you type in Cutco, your name is the first thing that comes up. Yeah. Fancy cars. Fancy houses. Sorry. no, No, I want you to continue your story. Your personal story? Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't mean to throw you off. I'm sorry. That's okay. Actually, that was pretty much it. Um, oh. Um, but I had the luxury of, like, knowing that I didn't have to be, you know, I had no stake in it. Um, they, really, they love to sell uh, a dream to you. Uh, all the things that society tells you you should have if you're a winner. Uh, a nice house, a nice car, uh, vacations, um, all the luxurious things in life that, you know, 99.9% of us don't have. But it's uh, a complete facade, except for a a few uh, heartless individuals. Uh, You know, a lot of people in the MLM business uh, take out huge loans, uh, leases, things like that to create the illusion of wealth. Uh, that's all part of the deception, selling you something that they don't have themselves. And it gets a lot of the lower people in debt too. They also have a lot of quotes like fake it till you make it. Well, yeah, it's like they're the. 95% of people involved with these are the lower tier people that don't actually make any money. They're they're just buying these this initial buy-in. And that's about that's about it. They don't make any money with this. Yeah. 
and they they really love to there's a lot of vagueness a lot of abstraction in how the company works well there has to be because it's a con there's a lot of um predatory psychology going on when they have these these meetings you know they kind of depend on on people not being rude um yeah they definitely politeness they single out people that are like yeah not assertive or vulnerable in a financial way it's a it's fucking disgusting if you ask me yeah they they prey a lot on disenfranchised groups also uh, a lot of non-english speakers in america anyway uh, yeah like people who are newly immigrated desperate. people yeah let me tell you as a union man that really grinds my gears you know what grinds my gears what's that capital's exploitation of labor and that's all it is there is no say what you will about a normal job at least there is some compensation at some mm-hmm. point no matter how meager it is yeah. but these things are just complete exploitation yeah and you know they they have some defenses for when people bring up the words pyramid scheme because a pyramid scheme is illegal and they are always kind of finding loopholes to make technically legal but one of the ways you can sort of single out uh you know a business though they like to say you know well how is the the military arranged you have you know your rank and file uh not enlisted to jurors, privates whatever sergeants and, and then you have your officers who there are less of than there are privates and then you have the higher officers there are less of those there's less colonels than the lieutenants there's less generals than there are colonels um, fuck you're so right you, the military is a pyramid scheme <laughs> <laughs> uh you know you have you know a corporation you know how many cfos are there uh, not very many uh however the difference between a pyramid scheme and just you know a regular pyramid <laughs> arrangement i guess uh is how the money flows um does it flow down or does it flow up you know if the ceo if if, if the people at the bottom are are channeling all of their money upwards then it's probably a scheme a scam if it flows downwards if you're getting paid for your time and your labor um then you know whatever the evils of capitalism aside it's probably legit so also a lot of times um there are a lot of classic cons of distraction happening in MLMs some uh, some flim flams oh yeah yeah some, uh, some bamboozles yeah in the the merchants of deception eric scheibler uh he talks about he got pretty high into it's either amway or quickstar which quickstar was a part of amway uh, i don't think quickstar is around anymore but Amway still is. Uh, you know, he began to, you know, peek behind the curtain. Uh, they would have uh, these big trips. They would go have, you know, huge parties and uh, you know, vacations all around the world and they would always uh urge their their you know the people on the down line the lower end of the pyramid uh to book these trips through a certain travel agency and what he found out 
after becoming suspicious of the whole operation was that the travel agencies were owned by the, the higher up people. So they were just trying to get them from every which way. Um, they would also uh, publish books under like their own publishing companies. So did they have like a, they, <clears throat> a friends and family deal for twice the price of a normal trip ticket? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep. Those fuckers. Yeah. Um, yeah. They would record uh, the the big celebratory meetings and conventions that the, these people just attended, and then sell them uh, an audio recording of that that they were just at. Uh, and also books that are you know full of kind of vague meaningless drivel well i mean to to be fair that's what most like uh industry conventions are <laughs> just selling shit back to you yeah. that you already paid for so mm -hmm. yeah but <clears throat> yeah that's that's not unique to MLMs, but, but yeah, carry on. Yeah. Um, there would be a lot of urging to, uh, buy these books that they would put out themselves. So you would have a little homegrown market for a cheaply made, uh, product. An Amazon romance novel. Yeah. A lot of those <laughs> so I think ultimately um, you know I'm sure some people might get into it thinking that these you know they can change it from the inside that that you can do it while still having a, a conscience and be successful at it like doing hair like doing heroin it's like yeah yeah Change change the system from the inside. I'm I'm not I'm gonna, gonna get hooked on this. I'm gonna do it and be just fine. Yeah, I'll be a, a functional addict. Which uh, this does kind of tie into, like it does kind of push those addiction buttons. You know, it's like they always have more. You know, more mm -hmm. to buy, more. If you buy this, then you'll be more successful at selling this. If you, and that's goes into selling the the self improvement aspect, where it's not that's not really a, a quantifiable thing. You can always be a better person. You can always Im improve your your self image. Which is why I'm about to go off on a totally different thing. Which is why I hate advertising. I understand why it exists, um, but I hate the, I'm using the same words again, the predatory psychology of like presenting an image of uh, kindness or, or, or love. Uh, by the way, we're, we're getting a sponsor this week um, and we're going to have a, an advertisement at some point during, during the show, just to let you Is know. They, they don't do advertising, I, but it's, it's going to be a surprise. It? It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> so, uh, so our, what was it talking about? Advertising. Our sponsor this week is Nexium. Nexium, building a better future. Okay, there's our ad. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I I hate the 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 ideas um of of goodness as i said love kindness you know uh charity things like that uh co-opted by a company they try and plant the seed in your head that those things can only be achieved through their product when it's really just a you know it's a fucking bar of soap jesus yeah but they want you to associate their bar of soap with you know 
the the love you feel for your grandchildren or you know your best friends well yeah i mean when it comes down to it it's just <clears throat> my hopes and dreams for a bar of soap is to get my butthole clean that's about it i don't want to that's the kind of there. advertising that i'd be okay with <laughs> soap it gets your butthole clean I'd buy that. Did uh, we totally go off tangent and forget about the cult-like aspects of these things? Not anymore. Well, it's it's definitely, uh, especially when they bring in a a religious aspect um, or and or political aspect uh, to their company product, whatever. There's a lot of trying to sow seeds of doubt about naysayers. Um, They have a lot of arguments ready made, you know, because there's a lot of arguments to be made against MLMs. Uh, You know, people are going to tell you it's a scam. It doesn't work. Um, They're going to tell you they heard these idiots on a podcast talking endless shit about about their company and they have they have a charismatic leader mm-hmm. yeah who will tell you that you should trust them that they they've made it and so can you uh, but don't listen to your friends and family don't full of shit. don't tell them they about this either uh, just yeah. uh, you know have a party Yep, throw a birthday party, and then real men. Well, you know, speaking of birthday parties, uh, we're doing something a little different this week, Joe. What's that? Uh, we have a guest who has a interesting uh, story about his experience with an MLM. Oh, I want to hear this. You want to hear this? I do. All right. Well, let's uh, let's yeah. bring John on. Is he back in the green room? Yeah, he's he's in the green room. We have it's a really my, nice my green closet. room set up. It's, it's dark and and stuffy. It has all the comforts of your own home. We've spared no expense. Hey, John. Hey, Hi, Mike. John. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Not too bad. How are you guys doing? Oh, you know just talking about some mlms heard you got a good story about one yeah and it's it's at the very least kind of an interesting story cool so let's hear it all right back when i was in in high school i had never really been exposed to mlms my my parents had real jobs um but uh i had one of my best friends this this girl um her family never had regular groceries they they had food that was just brand names i'd never heard of and i always thought it was weird and and i asked about it one day and her mom sat me down and and was telling me that they get all their food from a company called amway and i'd never heard of it but i was like okay oh, shit. and yeah every their cereal was all weird brand names all like everything they had was just stuff i'd never heard of um and you know i'd, I'd go over to their their house fairly often um but it wasn't really a house. I guess it was one of those like double wide trailers, which was pretty rare where I lived because it was kind of a upscale area. So I kind of figured that that was why they had mail order food is maybe they just didn't have the money to go to the grocery store. So they did it a different way. But then uh, um, it was getting close to my 18th birthday, senior year in high school. And, uh, and my friend's mom uh, tells me like, Hey, we're going to throw a little party for your birthday. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know they liked me that much. This is, like, flattering. This is huge. This is so cool. So, uh, yeah, 18th birthday rolls around, and they're like, yeah, come on over. So I show up to, to their trailer, and and I walk in, and there's, like, a little cake sitting on the table and um, a flip chart in the corner of the room and no other decorations. And I was like, all right, this is unusual, but this will be fun. So I sit down and and – my friend's uncle comes out and I'd never met him before, but he comes walking over, introduces himself. And he's like, all right, 
nice to meet you. Thanks for coming to my birthday thing, I, I guess. And uh, and then he starts the sales pitch. Says, oh, shit. So, so it was, <clears throat> was it just you in this, in this pitch? No, <laughs> they had also invited a few other friends. Uh, they had, um, like, their whole family was there. Um, and then they'd invited me and, like, two of my other friends, including someone that wasn't going to turn 18 for another three or four months. So we're all sitting there, like, God, this is weird. I, I thought that it was going to be, like, like a lunch thing. They were just going to make me a cake and sing happy birthday, give me some crappy presents, and I was going to be all happy. But yeah, no. Good, they, good old birthday party. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, this is going to be fun. But no, they, they start talking to me about those products that, that I've been eating at their house every time I go there. And I was like, oh, oh they want me to order some of their food. And that's cool. I've, I mean, I've, I've ordered candy bars from elementary school kids before. I figured it was like the same thing. But they started going deeper and deeper into it. And I realized like, oh my God, this is weird. This is like not a usual thing. And they really are headhunting me for some company right now. So I got a little excited thinking like, all right, hey, what if this is like a real legitimate job opportunity? So I'm really paying attention until the uncle starts to explain to me that the best way to make money isn't to sell the product, but to recruit people to sell the product. And I, I was kind of interested. I'm like, well, but that doesn't make sense. Like, so you want me to recruit people, to recruit people, to recruit people, where, where's the money coming from? And like, what product are, are, do you want me to sell? And he didn't have an answer. He just kept showing me pictures of- The product hey, is people. What's that? The product is people. Exactly. But no, he kept showing me like, um, hey, this guy has been working with Amway for five years and this is his mansion. This guy just started with Amway eight months ago and this is his Ferrari. And every time I'd have a question, that would be his response. And I was just weirded out by it, but sat through yeah. it anyway because friends, family. And they just kept going and going until finally he reached the end of his pitch. And he goes, all I need is $300 from you right now for a business license. And then uh, you can order your, your starter pack of all of the products that we're going to ship to you. And all we ask is that from now on, you know, if you're going to sell for us, we want you to use the products too. That way, you know, you can legitimately tell people what you like. And then he started to talk to me about Jesus. And that really freaked me out because at that point in my life, I had just started to kind of dabble in the idea of atheism. <laughs> so now I'm being told to sell a product, but not really, and to believe in Jesus and I'd be rich someday. And that's when I got really skeptical and started to ask more questions like, hey, so if I sell this stuff, I get to drive a Ferrari? And he goes, yeah, if you do good enough at it. And I was like, are you good at it? And he goes, well, I got you here. And I was like, well, what do you oh, drive? Shit. And he goes, that Buick outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, how long has my friend's family been selling this stuff? And he goes, oh, they've, they've been on the, on the Amway train for about three years now. And I was like, they live in a double wide trailer. Like, what, mm -hmm. what are you trying to sell me here? This doesn't seem right anymore. And it turned from, um, from them being friendly and trying to get me to buy this product and sell their product and recruit more people to, uh, if I didn't follow them, I don't love Jesus. And it, it got hostile very quickly. And I had to, you know, at the tender age of 18, come out as an atheist to my friend's very religious family because they were just <laughs> hammering me on it. And so, yeah, I, I left that house. Um, yeah, on my 18th birthday, uh, didn't even get to eat a piece of the cake they'd made for me. Yeah. <laughs> did you get any? Uh, did you get didn't, any didn't cool presents? Like an representative. <laughs> and I uh, lost some friends because I, I, I let them know I wasn't the same religion as them. Did wow. you even? Did you even get any presents? I didn't, but they probably would have been Amway brand presents anyway. So. <laughs> mm. Man, that that sounds like it should have been like a one of the Michael Scott horrible birthdays on The Office when he's <laughs> talking about all the terrible birthdays parties that he's had. 
when uh see my birthday is is in the, the middle of well i guess at the beginning of summer so like right there at the end of june so growing up my birthday parties consisted of like all of the kids that didn't go on summer vacations you know because they'd be like hey i'm having a birthday and like everyone would be like dude my family's going to tahoe my family's going here and i'd be like oh i guess the weird kid that doesn't have any friends or anywhere to go can come and hang out at my birthday. So everyone, yeah. the only long string left. Michael Scott birthdays. <laughs> so yeah. he, he, it was you and the kid with scoliosis at your birthday parties. Then yeah, don't talk trash on Fred. That kid was cool. And then, and then culminating on your final birthday of childhood, you had an Amway presentation. <laughs> it's true. Wow, your childhood sucked. <laughs> uh, but they didn't yeah, get supply me. Supply side Jesus wanted you. That's good. At least you weren't like a stupid gullible kid that signed up for Amway. Yeah, I wouldn't have done well. I, I just couldn't see myself selling generic products to people on their 18th birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get them in is their 18th birthday party yeah they did uh, my friend that wasn't going to turn 18 for another three or four months they did kind of corner her and say hey what are you doing on your 18th birthday <laughs> not this <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't think I've ever actually told that story before it was kind of a weird embarrassing like hijacking of a birthday so <laughs> <laughs> it's a cathartic telling it here it it is yeah yeah it's it's like it's like therapy except it costs a lot less so we're here for <laughs> have you ever worked for any of the big mlms when they came to like the convention center yeah herbalife and cabbie uh, oh cabbie's a good one which one is that i don't know that one cabbie is the uh the fashion one oh, where did i work I think I worked Mary Kay last year or the year before that. Is That's it, kind of an MLM, right? Is it? I think so. It, it showed up on the huge, huge list I looked up on Wikipedia of MLMs. I've, <clears throat> I worked Cabbie several years in a row, and, and all I could really figure out from what they do, because they do sell a product. You know, it's like it's fashion, it's women's clothes, but it seems like every woman that's there the reason that they're there is because their husband has a lot of money and wants them to have a job so they just sell clothes to their friends who sell clothes back to them oh yeah i was reading about it um and is they're they're required to go to two of those a year if they want to stay current my my thing about cabbie was is just the fucking stepford wives aspect to it it's like as you're walking in it's like whatever the line was for that season it's like every single person and you know it's like 90 percent women and like that were there so like it's like there was no no bathrooms to use except for in the back because they all <laughs> they were all converted to women's bathrooms. All the bathrooms in, in the convention center were converted to women's bathrooms. Um, but it was just like weird. Like one one time, it was like there was this pair of jeans, these distressed jeans, and every woman was wearing, and it was the exact same like the rips and the like little like white parts of the jeans were exactly the same. Machine distressed. Yeah, it, it was just like it was just like fucking clones walking around. It was weird. So, have you guys ever noticed um, that a lot of MLMs are really cult like, like almost like it's a religion that's also selling something to people? Well, shit, yes. it's funny. Yeah, me and Joe were just talking about it earlier. No way. Yeah, they're they're great minds. It is a commonality. They're a fucking sure. cult for sure terrifying yeah they really don't want you to just walk up to somebody else who's new and go like have you have you made any money off this and they go no have you no um 
they strongly discourage that. All right. Have either of you guys ever been approached by an MLM? Uh, I went to a Cutco meeting once. That, um, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't take at all. <laughs> it was like <laughs> at the first ten minutes I was there. I'm like, ah, fuck this. <laughs> but you couldn't leave. You know, you had to wait for the whole thing to be over. It was weird. They hold you hostage. Yeah. I do have one other story about MLM. If you want to hear that. Let's hear Absolutely. It. So, I was working uh, at at a bar restaurant, and uh, one of the servers there was a good buddy of mine, and uh, he had just come into a pretty massive inheritance, and uh, people started coming out of the woodwork, you know, like wanting to hang out with him that he hadn't seen in years because they heard he had money, and he was a super nice guy and had a lot of trouble turning people down. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm a nice guy, but I have no trouble turning people down. <laughs> and so when he got a phone call from an old friend from high school who was obviously trying to get him involved in an MLM, he turned to me and was like, dude, please help me with this. And I was like, okay, this will be fun. Uh, you know, because at this point I dealt with the, the whole Amway birthday hijacking. So I, I kind of had a little experience now. Um, so th- we were supposed to meet at TGI Fridays with, with this guy and the guy that recruited him. So we show up at Fridays, my buddy's buddy is there and his, you know, his recruiter was there. And we all sit down and order appetizers and drinks and it starts off with friendly talk. And did, then did you get the food. bottomless potato skins? Um, I think we got like some kind of bullshit chicken with Jack Daniels sauce on it. Oh, if I remember correctly. But, um, so this dude just starts a sales pitch. He's just like, hey, I heard you've got money. Um, if you sign up with us, we can make you have even more money than you'll ever be able to dream of. And they start doing the same thing that, that I experienced before where they, all they're talking about is um, the cool car you can buy or the cool house you can have. And, and that's all he has is this binder full of pictures of just flashy cars and flashy houses. So I start asking the questions like, hey, what are you guys selling? And he goes, cell phone accessories, but don't worry about that. And starts talking about recruiting people. So I look at my friend and I can tell he's panicking, doesn't know how to say no. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to sabotage this whole thing. I'm just going to bomb it right now. So I just kept asking just really more dickheaded questions one after the other. Like, hey, what kind of car do you drive? And one guy was like, well, I drive a Lexus. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So since it's part of your business, do you just write it off as a business expense? And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, so you don't own it? And he goes, no, I lease it. And I pass the expense off to my business. And I was like, yeah, so it's not your car. So you're lying to try to get this guy to give you money so that you can buy something cooler. <laughs> I mean, this, is, this is all a lie. You're not selling a product. You're not doing anything. You're just trying to deceive my friend. So they all kind of turned away from me and just started focusing on my friend. So it just ended up with me kind of just yelling insults at them with them ignoring me. And it got to a point where they told him, you know, it's going to be 300 some odd dollars for a business license. And at that point I'd done some research and I was like, actually it's like $12 for a business license. And you don't, you don't actually get a business license with that either. Exactly. (laughs) It was like, yeah, you could go to the County building right now. And it's, you know, $12 you own a business. So did they just like, did they start, inching away from you oh yeah <laughs> and so like by the end of it you're just like hey hey fucko hey fucko <laughs> yeah out of the room <laughs> were you there because that's exactly no. it. yeah they moved all of the appetizers to their side of the table like i couldn't even reach them anymore <laughs> but uh yeah they started uh, trying to extort money out of my friend telling him yeah 300 bucks and you're in the business and he's like well i don't have the kind of cash on me right now and they start telling him, we'll drive you to an ATM. And that was when I was like, hey, dude, don't you Jesus. Realize they're trying to rob you right now. <laughs> Who tells you they'll drive you to an ATM unless they're doing it to rob you? <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it, it did turn into kind of a yelling match in the parking lot where they told me I was ruining their business. And I told them that they're not businessmen. There's nothing to ruin. And yeah, they they jumped in their little uh, leased Lexus and peeled out the parking lot. Nice, yeah, good on you, saving your buddy. Yeah, well, I was I, I was 
a 23 year old drunk asshole at the time so it was, it was a good time <laughs> so not much has changed and now i'm a 41 year old drunk asshole. <laughs> <laughs> cool thanks john you got it mike yeah great stories thanks so. buddy ACAB. You want to get into that? Is that an MLM? No. Uh, but or, or it's the, a similar similar argument <clears throat> that all cops, all are, cops are bastard. Uh, yeah. I thought I thought it was all cops are buttholes. <laughs> are we getting too political on this one? Let's <laughs> let's save that for for another show. All right. Well, I don't know. We'll see how it plays. I might leave it in there or not. I already, I already went. I, you know, we already had an anti-capitalist. Well, I mean, I guess the whole theme of this is anti-capitalist because, well, MLMs are pretty much the, I don't know, the distillation. It's yeah, the essence of capitalism, I guess. Yeah, apparently we're pro-union. I, th- I think that's a good hill to die on. Being pro labor, anti capitalist? Yeah. I'd agree. You know, I think, uh, you know, people bandy, they throw out a, you know, the, the Nordic model, which is social democracy. It's a little different. Uh, but I thought, one thing. I thought that was like I mean, when, when you in, go to England and rape and pillage. Yeah, no. Uh, they, I mean, it is a, a capitalist society, uh, but they're very, they have very high percentage of union participation. I think it was something like sixty uh, percent. Well, I think over I there think you it, have to be uh, at least part of something, some kind of trade association. But yeah, no, I mean it's it's very. Very much strong over there. I'd like to see pro more labor of that here. Well, <clears throat> I got some bad news, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bleak right now. It's uh, yeah, bleak. Bleak is one way to put it. Yeah, I I think with this pandemic, uh. Yeah, labor rights is going to be set back at least a generation. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, you know, up until before this happened, I mean, labor has been slowly eroded into almost irrelevancy as it is. But, yeah, yeah, fuck a generation. It might go back 100 years, you know. We'll see. Yeah, it's terrifying. But, I mean, right now it's it's about cops being buttholes murdering people and it's not cool so i mean i don't think this this episode is going to be as funny it's <laughs> it's going to be yeah it's not well shit dude we got anything else we want to talk about mlms we kind of we kind of uh, went way off the rails <laughs> That's fine. I'm okay with that. It's the old the old bait and switch, or this is going to be the MLM podcast. We're going to say it's one thing, and yep. then when you get into it, and then all of a sudden, seize the means of production. <laughs> Fooled you. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, bitch. Join us, comrade. <laughs> I forget. I was trying to get to the the main, like my my closing argument. Let's hear it, Perry Mason. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> uh, there's no way to be ethical in a company whose business model is dependent on being unethical. You can't change it from the inside. You're not going to either going to fail or you're you're going to become an unethical person. <laughs>